guys, Jessica here. Um, I did a video the other day and I was showing you, um, I was putting Kim's dinner together and I was talking about how I let it set out on the counter for a little while to uh, warm up a little bit. Um, so it's not so cold as, you know, as cold as it is coming out of the refrigerator. And I have seen a ton of comments and questions about this. Um, and in fact, somebody was, um, somebody posted about it in another group and there were a ton of comments and questions about this, um, because a lot of people hadn't heard about it before. And of course there are some people who, um, just refuse the information in front of them and say, oh, well, I'm not doing that. That's too inconvenient or whatever, um, which is unfortunate, but I wanted to expand upon that a little bit. Um, as I'm getting Kim's din dinner ready again. So I, um, I'm getting, I'm, what I do is I get, um, get everything out of the fridge and I put it in her bowl and I let it sit out on the counter for a little while. But there are a couple of other things you can do, um, as well because not everybody is comfortable with doing that. And I understand that, um, with, or, and, and a lot of people don't have the time and a lot of people have dogs who are very impatient. So um, Kim is in here, she knows I'm putting her dinner together, but she also is not um, a very demanding dog. She's okay with, she understands, I t I, you know, I let her know, okay, I'll, we'll, we'll um, you know, get it in just a little bit. We gotta let her warm up some and she's good with that. So I'm gonna get her, her dinner put together as I'm talking to you. But, um, so a couple of things you can do, and then I'm going to talk about why. Um, so I let her, her food set out on the counter for a little while. Um, if I'm in a rush or, you know, if I start preparing her food a little bit too late or, um, you know, I'm just in a time crunch, then there are a couple of other things that you can do. And I've done them. Um, you can, either put the food in a um, plastic baggie, which I don't prefer to do because if I can avoid plastics at all, um, and I, I'm trying to avoid plastics, especially single use plastics, um, they're really damaging to the environment. And a lot of them have like BPAs and stuff in them that I don't want in my food so I don't want it in my dog's food either um but another thing you can do because I store her food in um glass containers so if you have glass containers you can also submerge the glass containers in a bath of warm water um you don't have to cover it because you don't want water to get in but maybe just you know halfway up and let it set in a, in a bath of warm water for a little while and that also is going to bring the temperature of the food up um without uh cooking it we don't we don't want to cook it that defeats the purpose of uh, a raw food diet and um without degrading any of the nutritional value um some people were asking about microwaving the food and I highly, highly um, recommend you do not microwave any food, your dog's food or your food. Um, microwaves are incredibly convenient, but they are also incredibly damaging. They um, completely break down uh, and actually restructure cell organization. Um, so you completely degrade the nutritional value of your food when you use a microwave. So we definitely want to avoid that. Um, you know, when we're feeding our dogs, especially those of us who are raw feeding or even are doing a home cooked uh, meal for our dogs, we're trying the very best we can to make sure our dog is getting um, the nutrients that they need and we want to, you know, we want to provide them the healthiest life, the healthiest food and, and therefore the healthiest lifestyle we can. So putting anything in the microwave is going to, um, it, it just completely goes against everything we're trying to do for our dogs because we're, com you completely degrade the nutritional value. And in some instances, you can actually change the cell structure so much, um, that, you can actually create carcinogens in the food and we don't want to do that. Um, so I put Kim's food together in her bowl and then I let it set out on the counter for a little while. And I understand, see, I, I feed a, um, 
Uh, currently, I'm feeding a pre-made raw from a reputable company. I We switched between Answer's Pet Food and Darwin's Pet Food. Um, I like feeding different proteins and different um, different suppliers. You, uh, you know, we prefer answers, but giving um, giving her, giving Kim um, variation in her diet is always, all, also important. So we switch between the two, and then I also feed her uh, answers goat milk, which all of the answers products <laughs> are fermented. Um, so fermenting the food, I'm just gonna let her lick the bowl while I talk to you guys. So fermenting the food um, and, and the process that answers uses is increasing the, um, the availability of good bacteria in their food um, and letting the goat's milk or the answer's pet food set out is actually going to increase the uh, amount of good bacteria because you're giving um, you're giving the good bacteria a, an environment to flourish in when you let it heat up a little bit. And I don't mean heat it up like over a food, uh, over a you know fire or a heat source, but just letting it sit out on the counter is going to allow that bacteria um, an appropriate environment to flourish and um, proliferate. So. We definitely want to do that. Um, so where is all of this coming from? Because a lot of people are really skeptical about it. And a lot of people are saying, um, you know, this is a lot of great anecdotal evidence, but what's going on? So we get this information, excuse me for getting too close. I'm going to get a paper towel. My camera's on top of the pit of paper towel wrap. So um, Dr. Judy Morgan is actually the person that I got this information from and reading a lot of other comments, other people that are aware of uh, this not feeding cold food, uh, Dr. Judy Morgan is where they got their information from as well. And um, she states she is a, an, a holistic veterinarian. I think she's an integrative veterinarian, integrative health veterinarian. And uh, look her up. She is the author of the yin, yin and yang diet for dogs. She practices um, a lot of Chinese medicine, especially in sourcing foods. So she talks about hot foods and cold foods. And I don't mean temperature, the actual physical temperature of the foods, but foods that are cooling to the body and foods that are warming to the body. Um, and understanding the difference in your dogs if they, are, if they run cold or if they run hot and feeding seasonally um, based on you know, the temperature of your dog, but she actually talks about the physical temperature of your food as well, because the, temp the physical temperature of your food, this goes for you, this goes for your dog, this goes for your cat. Um, and we know in the wild when a dog or a wolf, which is, um, you know, dogs are uh, uh, um, relatives of wolves, um, we know that they, when they hunt their prey and they kill it, that that they start eating so that that animal is already at they have an increased body temperature um so we know that they're not generally eating cold food to begin with and certainly not frozen food although in instances i mean obviously there are instances when if you're hungry you have to eat what's available and if it's the middle of winter then maybe um after you know the first day or the second day your your prey that you have a, if they have a, a large prey animal, then some of the food is going to be, some of that meat and organs is going to be cold, even frozen. But generally, when they start eating, that prey is um, body, it's, it's regular body temperature, so it is warm. Um, and going back to what Dr. Judy Morgan talks about is, um, so the, the, di the, the, if I could talk, the digestive system, which is your spleen system, um, it is, Eating cold foods over and over and over again, um, which is what a lot of people do, a lot of raw feeders do with their dogs. Um, and believe me, I have been guilty of it. And sometimes Kim does eat cold food out of the fridge. I'm trying not to do that very often, but it does happen and I understand. But eating a cold meal over and over and over and over again, you're, what you're doing is slowing down the digestive tract, the digestive system or the spleen system. And 
if you think about it, and I know I get like this, when it's really cold outside and I walk outside, my body just like tenses up because I'm cold and that's like a natural reaction. Well, the same thing is happening inside of your body and inside of your dog's body when you eat cold foods, especially if you're eating cold foods over and over and over again, your digestive system slows down. So when you feed your dog a cold food over and over and over again, um, there's a chance of stagnation in the digestive system. So you can wind up, your dog can wind up with um, you know, just stagnant food in their digestive system because they're, it's not working at um, like an optimal level because all of the, the physical coldness is slowing down the processes inside of the body. Um, and of course we know the digestive system is closely linked to the immune system. Um, so we definitely don't want to slow down uh, the processes of the immune system either. So, you know, we do the best we can for our dogs and I get that, but I wanted to expand upon what I was talking about the other day because there were so many people um, commenting and questioning about it. And there's so many people out there who are like, what is this about? I've never heard of this. Um, so what happens and what Dr. Judy Morgan says is that the uh, you know, feeding cold foods, physically cold foods over and over and over again um, can lead to stagnation in the digestive system, which can also lead to um, uh, uh, growth of tumors and um, a lack of energy in the body. So, and a lot of that comes from Chinese medicine that Dr. Judy Morgan talks about a lot um, and has studied extensively. But this is, this is where this is coming from. So many people are saying, hey, what are you talking about? What is going on? Why can't we feed our dog the raw food right out of the refrigerator? Um, and some people even feed their dog raw food right out of the freezer, which I haven't done that, but I understand it, especially for, for um, dogs who uh, tend to gulp their food down. I've heard of that. Um, so, you know, we do the best we can for our dogs and I get it. And every once in a while, Kim will get a meal that it hasn't been warmed up to room temperature, um, but I try not to because I know better. And when we know better, we do better. So that's the point of this video. Um, I just wanted to expand upon that for you guys. Uh, and don't forget, um, I recently came out with my new ebook, which I'm so excited to share with you guys, Seven Miracle Steps to Train Your Dog. Um, and we do, I do talk about nutrition in that book uh, because it is a vital part of your dog's health which is a vital part of training um, because training requires brain power and focus. So it all ties in together, guys. Um, so go ahead, I, I put a link in the description of this video. Go ahead and grab yourself a copy, Seven Miracle Steps to Train Your Dog. I highly encourage you to get a copy um, for yourself. Share this video with anybody who, um, uh, who is a raw feeder or who is interested in raw feeding, highly, highly recommend it. Um, a balanced raw food diet is species appropriate, biologically appropriate for your dog and your dog is going to not just survive but thrive on um, a species specific, biologically appropriate diet. So uh, with that guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. I'm gonna let Kim's food warm up a little bit um, and I'm also going to go feed my cats. So I will see you guys in the next video.